evening, everyone. My name is Kurt Frank. I'm the Executive Vice President and Executive Editor of The Blade, and we welcome all of you here tonight for this spring continuation of Authors, Authors, the series that's presented as usual by The Blade and arranged by the library. Thank you all for your support of this series. Authors, Authors, one of our goals is to inspire the community. And tonight, I think we've done that with no better than our guest, Juan Felipe Herrera, our U.S. Poet Laureate. Good evening and welcome to the library. Glad to have you here this evening. And we're very, very much grateful for your support of Author Authors in our probably 20, what is it, 23rd year of uh, doing Author Authors. And so far, so good. It continues to be very successful. As well as your library knows, and you know, this is one example of your library working to inspire the community and transform lives. And so with all of that, transforming lives, we're gonna do a little bit of that tonight. And permit me to introduce tonight's guest. Juan Felipe Huera is the author of 28, 28 books of poetry, novels for young adults, and collections for children including Half the World in Light, New and Selected Poems, winner of the National Book Critics Circle Award and the International Latino Book Award. His other honors include fellowships from the Guggenheim Foundation and the National Endowment for the Arts, two Latino Hall of Fame Poetry Awards, and a Penn Beyond Margins Award elected a chancellor for the Academy of American Poets in 2011. Hawera served as the Poet Laureate of California from 2012 to 2015. And I can say many of my colleagues in California think you're absolutely terrific. He was awarded the Robert Kirsch Award for Lifetime Achievement at the 36th LA Times Book Prizes. And what you'll see in Hawera's poems is that he is an American original. Former librarian of Congress, Dr. Billington, compared him to Whitman and the sublimity of his work to Leaves of Grass. In fact, Billington thought he expanded upon it. What you won't find in Huera is a passive bystander. He is an entrenched community builder and uses poetry and teaches poetry in new and exciting ways and achieves dynamic results. Welcome to our stage, who will grace our lectern tonight, your United States Poet Laureate, appointed by former President Obama, Juan Felipe Huera. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. You're, you're too kind. Uh, I really appreciate you being here, and I appreciate being here at the Toledo Library, and in Toledo, and in Ohio, all at the same time. <laughs> and uh, it is true, uh, I sense a lot of kindness and, and happiness and friendship as I've met everyone here, very open. Muchas gracias. And this is exactly who you are and what you are doing here, is what we need throughout the United States. So let's give all of you a big super hand, a big super mind. And, and it's so good to be here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm here for a day. I uh, would like to be here longer. It's great to be here because it's, and you're part of the beautiful mosaic, you know, the beautiful mural that I've been visiting uh, for the last two years across the United States. Uh, taking trains, uh, thinking I could carry a, a thousand pound piece of luggage all across the US. And when I finally got to Philadelphia, I discovered that it's not a good idea to have a big piece of luggage as you fly down the steep stairs to get a train. <laughs> it's not a good idea, because you have to get down those stairs at the train station in Philadelphia. And then um, there's another little detail. You have to get up on the train. There's a couple of details that I didn't know about, I didn't think about uh, when I was um, heading out to read poetry in the US. And I think all I needed was um, my guitar, because I feel like a, uh, like a folk singer in some ways. 
Uh, remember those folk singing days? Uh, remember the current uh, guitar days? I think we still have guitars, people playing a lot of indie music and carrying their guitars and strumming some chords and, and writing, uh, writing, uh, writing some songs. That's so beautiful. So I think this is what we're all doing now. We're all engaged in using our voices, and that's what I'm here for, to let you know that you have, everyone here has a beautiful voice. That really is my message. Everything else is really second. My, my message is you have a beautiful voice. And the reason I give you those words is because when I was in third grade, Mrs. Lelia Sampson gave me those words. And so I had been a, back, um, a background boy, which was the best place to be. Because in, when you're in the background, no one sees you. They see everybody in the foreground. So I was very happy to be back there in the background in third grade. Uh, and the reason was because, in a way, probably most of the reason was because I only spoke Spanish. And when we used to speak Spanish and English back in the 50s, uh, you get punished straight 100%. That, that's over. <laughs> One word, and you're done. You're a Spanish boy walking. You're <laughs> It, it, it was a Spanish-speaking boy walking or Spanish-speaking girl walking. Uh, so Mrs. Sampson called me up to the front of the class, Mrs. Lelia Sampson. And I said to myself, oh, this is going to be impossible. There's no way I'm going to get up to the front of that class. I don't know how much, if I, if I, even if I make an attempt, I have no idea what it feels like to get in front of a class to begin with. See, to get in front of the class, you have to have an idea and an experience. Your body has to know how to get in front of the class, you know. But anyway, we all have to um, take a first step. So I made it to the front of the class. And then you have to turn around. That's another little thing you have to do. Because the class is behind you so far. <laughs> so you have to turn around. And that's not all. Then you have to face the class. So another little step there. And uh, one of the, uh, the, the next step is you have to stand up facing the class, in front of the class, in front of you. That's a lot of stuff there. It's like a PhD. <laughs> and for someone who had never spoken or had spoken and had been punished for speaking, it was even uh, more difficult. You can imagine, you know, you yourselves have being called on to get in front of audiences, and it's pretty tough at first. So then Mrs. Sampson said, sing a song. I said, you have to be kidding, Mrs. Sampson. I just thought I'd get in front of class and get my points or whatever it is that's going on here. <laughs> oh, no. Come on, sing a song. But I was, I was next to her, and she was very warm, and she was very kind and very embracing, and, and it was her voice that was very inviting, very open, very tender. I like my mother's voice. So I sang, I sang Three Blind Mice. I sang Three Blind Mice. That's a big song if you think about it. That's a, that's a big old song, because then you have to change rhythms and all that. Starts really softly, you know, three blind mice, but don't let that fool you, because <laughs> somewhere down the line, you're going to have to rock out. <laughs> I finished singing it. I'm telling you, because this was a very, this was a turning point in my life in third grade. And then she said to me, you have a beautiful voice, Juanito, you, you have a beautiful voice. And I was just frozen. I was stunned. I, I didn't want to accept it. I, I, you know, when you hear something, someone says, you're beautiful, or you look great, or you just look magnificent. And we hear it, and part of us gets the words, the you know, dictionary information works out in there. Yeah, beautiful. Excellent. Thank you. But the rest of you is kind of 
kind of waving. You're going like this. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I, it's impossible. Is that really true? Uh, no way. Or, you know, we start doing that. So I did that. So it took me the rest of my life to work it out. And it started in, I had great teachers in elementary school and junior high and high school. And they would challenge me and they would remind me in their own way. Until the day came when Mr. Schuster in seventh grade was an amazing teacher. Talk, talked to us all about Yasha Heifetz and Isaac Stern and Beethoven and Mozart and Mendelssohn. Fabulous. I loved it all. I drank it all. It was like enchiladas for me. I just loved it all. I, I just loved music. He says, uh, uh, Juan, what are you? Well, what are you? What are you? Oh, wow. That, that's a whole different thing. Because <laughs> I never had said, and no one had ever asked me, who I was, what I was, where I came from, what do I call myself, what's going on in my life. So, oh, no, 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 no. I got to do this all over again. Uh, I said, uh, Mr. Schuster, uh, I'm, uh, what does this have to do with music, Mr. Schuster? I'm, uh, Wow, this is tough here. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I just come back from San Francisco. I lived in San Francisco a little bit. I'm a, uh, I'm a Hawaiian. I'm Hawaiian. Yeah. I love my Hawaiian friends in, ba in the Bay Area. I love them. Tyrone Aquino, Honolulu Naipo, Alfredo Bautista. They were, we were tight friends, but I wasn't Hawaiian. Yeah, I had a hard time. I, I didn't say I was Mexican. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I said, that's it. That's it. From now on, I'm not going to lie. And from now on, I'm going to say and tell the truth. But I don't know how to do it. So I'm going to take a class that I don't want to take. I'm going to forget about music. My dream to play the saxophone, I'm going to forget about it. I'm going to just, no, it's not going to happen. Because I'm going to work on this right here. And guess what class I took? That I had to, that was going to pull me out on my shaken skeleton self. Public speaking is good. It's good, but this is even tougher. And Spanish, I had I I I took that in middle school. I got it going there a little bit. So I was taking care of that already. Because I spoke I spoke campesino Spanish, which is cool. But no one else seemed to speak campesino Spanish. So I had to take another Spanish. Imagine that. You already talk campesino farm worker Spanish. And now you got to take another kind of another Spanish, because that wasn't valued either. Pa cavarla. <laughs> you know, you're already dealing with all this stuff. Now you got to take Spanish Spanish, because your Spanish is not in the books. I took choir, because you're going to get called, right? Uh, John, can you please step up? OK, uh, right, me? Yes, you, John. Hurry up. Come on. Uh, right now? Yes, right now. Uh, by myself? Yes, by yourself. Come on. we got to get this song learned up. Right now? Yes, right now. Just one little step. OK. Just follow Mark on the piano. Da la 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 Can you play that again, Dr. Rossi? La 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 la. Okay. Uh, la 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 la. Okay, John. Thank you. So you do that day after day. I 
until the day comes when you have to get up on a free speech mound because you're feeling the feeling now. You see things happening now. Uh, there's wars and there's, there's pain in the community and there's thirst and hunger. So now, are you going to turn back into the background? Are you going to get into the foreground and speak and not lie and present yourself with your voice? So that's, that's, that's the path I got on. I was still nervous and I still squeaked. Well, my dears, I've got a stack of poems here. And uh, how about, how about, th these are kind of hot off the press. They're like airport, hotel kind of poems and fast writing poems. So I have one called Aztec Invasions. And I have one called, America Stop Deporting Us. Which one would you like me to read? <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> OK, uh, Aztec Invasions. This was a poem I dedicated to my friend Francisco Alarcón, who uh, passed away. He got cancer uh, last uh, December of stomach cancer. He wanted to beat it, but he got notified once he had stage four. And he was a great Nahuatl. Uh, uh, he became, he chose to become a Nahuatl scholar, a scholar of uh, what we would call Aztec language, Aztec culture, Aztec thought. And he just burned into it. He learned it. And he wrote a great book called Snake Poems. So I invite you to look that up. You're going to love that book and became a shaman of the community, too. He just really went all out. So I thought in this poem, dedicated to him, I will let Aztec words literally just invade the poem. Maybe they make sense, maybe they don't, because they're going to just come in here and, and, and homestead the poem. So would you like to do some of that? So let's do it together. Why don't we start together? Would you like to do that? So everyone say, Aztec, Aztec. Invasions. invasions. Aztec, Aztec. In. invasions. invasions. After, After the reading, Sente Otl. I, I noticed, noticed we, we enduring Kalpuli, the, the reading of. Poetas del Pueblo, Copal, at La Plaza, de las Tres Culturas, Coyol Shauki, Ocelotl, Comal, Sartén, Tacuche, Our, Rock Face, Our, Voices, had been condor wing brushed, colored popocatepetl, popo cate petal, in warrior penacho sky bolt, even though aunque as Jose Montoya. Used to say, aunque, that is, jade sacrifice canto. Our voice, oyin, jazz, had attained nezahualcoyotl, something new, ranchera, after so many years. Walking, Walking round, round. Danza. danza, de mascal, de mascal. confessions, confessions. metate, ilwicamina, malinche, malinayi, our, our river, river. 
Río. Río. Puichol. Río. Cora. Cora. Tepehuana. Tepehuana. Honduras. El Grande, El Paso, we were breathing, fire, trains, we were sowing, maíz, azul, blue, bathing in, it's blaze, bluish, life, we were gathering, blessing, brilliance, La look, our faces in gentle casa colors, toltecatl, esmeralda, skull, in the complexity, open, raining, our dresses in nakedness, ombligo, leonar. Unity. You guys did good. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of beautiful words, you know. That, that time, that same time, this is 60s and 70s, when we popped open the uh, cultural uh, treasures that we all had and that we didn't have at hand before, like in the women's movement, all the social movements, uh, gay, lesbian, LGBTQ plus movement, all the movements, Afri uh, African American power movement, all the movements, the social movements, civil rights movement. We opened up those doors that had been locked. Remember that? They had been locked. Remember that? And when we opened those doors, how did you feel? Free. Everybody say free. free. So that's the feeling of those words. Sentiotl is the uh, goddess of corn, of maize. Uh, Koyol Shauki, the goddess of the moon, destroyed by the warring god of the sun. That's a whole thing. And you look it up, and there's a lot of ac activity around Koyol Shauki. And Takuche, uh, the last one I'll talk about, <laughs> Takuche is most interesting. I learned the meaning of that in a barber shop in Redlands, California. I was getting my 1950s barbershop haircut. Everything's frozen in the 1950s in this barbershop. It's just frozen. The TV's frozen in time. The, the, the static on the screen is frozen from the 50s. And there's a boxing match sponsored by Gillette or something. <laughs> and there were these guys sitting in front of me waiting for their turn. And for some reason, we started talking about zoot suit times. Everybody, everyone say pachuco. We started talking about Pachuco times. And, uh, and I said, yeah, you know, uh, and, and, and the, hat, the hat is called Tando. And they said, yeah, of course it is. Everyone say Tando. Tando. So that's the name of the hat in Pachuco talk, in Borderlands talk. And the whole outfit with the long coat and the, and the pants are called drapes. You could say drapes in English. They're called drapes. Everyone say drapes. You got a little skinny spaghetti belt on, and you got some cool shoes, and you got, and then the, the, the your ankles are tied with a little peg leg style, and the trap is flapping all over the place. And your little spaghetti uh, 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 belt, and your super long Edwardian uh, coat, and your tando, big old shh, flappy hat with a giant cool uh, 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 owl feather in there. And uh, that whole thing is called your takuche. Everyone say takuche. Because if you have your whole takuche together, then you have qualified to be a bona fide member of the borderlands. <laughs> and there's other, there's two missing pieces, but we won't talk about, that. there's more. Because you have to have a ramfla. That's the second variable in the whole experiment. And what's a ramfla in English? It's a cool car. Everybody say cool car. But you, you know, if you say cool car, you're not going to make it. So you have to say ramfla. Everyone say, I got my ramfla today. Metal flake. Green, with skull faces and smoke. 
donut steering wheel. That's another story. Because I got a California Laureate Low Rider Parade in San Francisco. Can you imagine that? It's a whole other story. I got in the low rider at 45 degrees and, and, and in all directions, you know. Blasting Bob Marley down 24th Street. And all the hipsters looking out the window going, hey, oh, what is that? What's going on over there? Oh, that's a that's a ramfla, my dear brother. <laughs> So shall we do this one, or shall I mellow out a little bit? This one? Oh, it's called uh, America Stop Deporting Us. OK. And we're going to do this one together, too. You guys can say America, OK? You guys go America, then I'll finish the line. Is that good? Because today we're, we're, we're getting our voices out, remember? You have a beautiful voice. Let's get your voices out. Let's get all of our voices out. Toledo, library, community, let's do that. It's up to you. OK, uh, America stop deporting us. And of course, Allen Ginsberg, our good friend, has, has his America poems. And uh, this is inspired by his, his style and by his uh, openness as well, and recent. Uh, experiences. So, America? America? What happened to making tortillas together? Oh, you want to do the whole thing? Okay. Well, well, okay. <laughs> well, we can do that. Let's do the whole thing. Okay. America? America. What happened to making tortillas together? America? America? You can bring the butter and salt and some tapatillo. America, Guadalupe Garcia, De Rayos, is your sister. America, what are you going to tell her children left behind? America, did you forget that Arizona was Mexican land? America, how about a liberation bus? Instead of, Instead of a deportation bus. America, America. We, love we love the Constitution. In particular, In particular the, freedom the freedom part. America, America. have you read the Constitution lately? <laughs> America, America, the airport is jammed, airport is jammed. with luggage, luggage from Walmart. America. America, there are millions stuck in between. Stuck in between. The stars and the stripes. Stars and stripes. America. America, try a little. Try a little. Tres, flores. Tres flores, pomade. pomade. America. America, did you ever get Allen Ginsberg's letter? America, America. America. stop using the words. Using the words. Illegal. And aliens? aliens. America? America? This is not a Star Wars episode. America? You're fracking me out. America? America. Your, pipelines Your pipelines are jammed are jam with sacred tobacco. Sacred tobacco. America. America? You need, you need an, alternative an alternative for the word Alternative. <laughs> America, your nationalism is killing me. America, why don't you join a folklorico fast? America, you need two major in American studies. In American studies. America, what happened to compassion? America. My mother's interested in compassion. America, America. my mother says, my mother says you, can you can have her green card. Her green card. 
Hey America. hey America, let's paint a mural, paint a mural. Like, the like the one of Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King. in Toledo, Ohio. In Toledo, Ohio. Come, on, America. Come on, America. Let's paint a mural like that. Mural. America, how about reading Emma Lazarus and Jose Montoya, Jose Montoya. and Jenny Lim and, Jenny Lim. and Gwendolyn Brooks America. America. Try a pupusa con loroco from La Santaneca. America, why don't you give the Border Patrol Taco Tuesdays? <laughs> America, the border is just a little bit too uncomfortable. America, America, you ever tried crossing all the way to the coroner's trailer? America, can you try uh, at least open borders for 90 days? America, did you read the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo? America, we're still waiting for our land rights. America, don't you think? 169 years of waiting is too long? America, you ever pick cucumbers? America, our feet are rotting in the fields. America, write a poem instead of an executive order. America, I am migrating as we speak. America, stop making criminals without a crime. America, have you read the census figures? There's just too many of us singing the colores. America, have you noticed Everything is in Spanish? America, the Super Bowl is becoming the Menudo Bowl. America, hurry up. The, dream, the dreamers are tired of dreaming. America, the world is a little bit upset with you. America, your security team needs a little tres leches cake. America, stop freaking out about the word community and the word equality. America, all that border wire is tripping you up. America, there are 95 languages spoken in Bora High School in Boise, Idaho. America, did you forget how to pronounce your name in Spanish? America, America, America. America, are you listening? Stop deporting us. America, we are tired of making green cards out of lettuce. America, I'm getting ready to boycott. America, get legal with our legal rights. America, come on down. The guacamole is ready. I'll make an organic peanut butter sandwich with red rice. red rice. America, don't be afraid. Maybe you need a curandera. America, I'm jumping the border wall, waiting for your call.
Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Did you enjoy that poem? Yes. Enjoy that poem? Thank you. Father used to say, Chico, when I got, when I met, when I got, when I jumped on a train from Chihuahua, back when I was 14, Juanito, yeah. I just hung on to that train, trembling and shaking, till we finally got to Denver, Colorado. Remember, I was hanging on the outside of the train. It was so cold, Juanito, that when I spit, it turned into little ice cubes when it hit the ground. And you know, I was thinking about my parents and my father with his harmonica and his songs and his jokes and his stories, most of all, about coming to the United States. And I was thinking about my mother's stories about coming to the United States. Let's see. Oh, Juanito, cuando me vine con tu mamá. Allá desde Tepito. Ya casi menos cuando se acababa la revolución. You know, when we jumped, we jumped on a train too. At the end of the Mexican Revolution, it was around 1918. And we boarded on that train all the way to Juarez, Chihuahua. It wasn't easy for the women, Juanito. Because your grandmother, Juanita, had to take care of all the children. And we already didn't have anything. So we slept on bricks in Juarez. That's what we slept on, Juanito. You think you have pillows. You always complain about your pillows. But guess what? We slept on bricks. How about that, Juanito? And you know what I did when I got to El Paso and when I was in Juarez? No, mama. <laughs> well, I used to wipe the, the kettles of, of Mrs. Pickett. I used to work for Mrs. Pickett up there on Franklin Mountain. <laughs> And when she wasn't looking, ooh, I take a big old scoop. It was really good. And I used to wax all the floors too, Juanito. So don't you ever be complaining about your, your bologna sandwich at lunchtime. <laughs> and don't you be hiding that, that can of sardines with that little can opener I give you to take to school. Don't you ever do that. Don't trade it for a peanut butter sandwich. I work hard for that little sardine can. <laughs> No, but mama, nobody else has sardines. <laughs> so that's how it is. <laughs> and the reason I bring up, uh, in a way, I mean, it just kind of came together uh, the other night. It came together uh, yesterday for me. The picture snapped into place. I was, uh, I was doing some research on... Um, Sidney uh, Rob Robertson Cowell, as you may know, who uh, in the late, in the 30s, on her own, uh, got in a car, worked for the WPA, and uh, received a few funds on her car and her dog and her little sleeping bag to cross the United States interviewing uh, uh, the singers, folk singers. And and that's what she did. She slipped by the road, by the river, and she says where the songs were. And she caught up to the 40, uh, sons and grandsons of the 49ers in the Sierra Nevada area, still mining. And she interviewed them, took photographs of them, wrote notes about her field work. 
and 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 she ran into something. One of them was called John Stone, another one Aaron Morgan, another one Leon Ponce, all trying to catch some of that. What they called a little pile. Well, we're going to make our little pile, and then we're going to leave. And of course, the little pile was all that little gold dust that you end up picking up with your uh, your pan. Once you made a little pile, you headed on back to Kentucky, back to Colorado, back to Texas, or maybe you'd stay in California. <laughs> back in the 1850s, and this is in the 30s. There was very little gold left. And they were all playing <laughs> harmonicas, and they were all fiddlers, and they all had uh, little beat-up guitars, and they all traded songs with each other, and they all learned songs from each other, and they all learned stories from each other, and they were a little tight community of miners and travelers. And I said, wait a minute. Because Sidney Cowell, Robertson Cowell's main question was, what is it that makes American folk song American? So she set out. She did amazing work. You'll find her work at the Library of Congress, and I'm sure you'll find out about her at this beautiful library here, too. And then it all snapped together, folks. Big whammy. It was like enchilada whammy. It, it really hit me hard. I said, my parents were like that. My parents were the same kind of people. They were travelers. They were migrants, just like the early uh, folk singers, early miners, just like the Armenians and the Portuguese from the Azores. That's what they did. They migrated. They traveled. They had their little harmonica, little guitar. They told stories about coming from Mexico, coming from the Azores, coming from Kentucky, from Wisconsin, from Colorado. And they, they worked in little villages, mining camps, camps. Because that's just like my parents, just like the American folk singers. They were the same people, same people. And that just was a big shock to me. And they were all Americans. And what made them American was traveling, sharing songs, inventing songs, telling stories, carrying the stories forwards about this place, about this big nation, from the people in it that worked in it, that, that worked by the road, by the, by the mining camps, by the mining hills, generation after generation. What's the difference? What was the difference? So I want you to think about the folk singers of early, early times. And uh, of course, the one and only uh, Sidney uh, Robertson Cowell. And what, what a brave woman. What a, fabulous uh, pioneering ethnographer of folk song, American folk song. And she carried a, a recorder called the Presto. And uh, these pancake-like looking discs, have you seen those? They're like heavy pancakes. And you put down the stylus, and they burn on the stylus. And they record the songs. And that's how Alan Lomax, as you know, recorded all the blues players uh, from the South. American, uh, amazing recordings. Willie Guthrie and uh, the Guthrie family and the Seeger family. I love all that stuff. And I love people and music and voices. But then migrants, migrating folk singers and migrating folk singers like my mother and father. I never saw my mother and father's folk singers. Could you believe that? They were folk singers. Everybody say folk singers. <laughs> American folk singers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, put that together, OK? I just put it together, I think. So I'm giving it to you to finish it up for me, OK? Think about it, finish it up for me. It's a new insight. Because we talk about immigrants and migrants, and I know that's a great discussion. But we, we have this big 1,000-pound um, machinery on our back political machinery where we take sides and where there's a lot of policies and there's a lot of suffering. And we, we want to deal with that machinery, this immigration border machinery, migra migration, migrant, immigration, border, weaponry, uh, militarized machinery. 
and deportation machinery and incarceration machinery. And we're just wrapped up in there, like uh, caught in a big, giant mechanical spider web. But just for a second, just for a second, we can continue that. It's important. We pull back a little bit and we go, wait a minute, American folk singers. <laughs> Everybody say, American folk singers. Because all migrants and immigrants carry songs and stories and play instruments and share them and teach each other those songs. We're not going to find those songs in Philosophy 107. We're not going to find them there. I wish we would, or in our curriculum. I wish we would. So uh, who, who's actually uh, transmitting what America is? Who's actually keeping it alive, if not for the folk singers of early time and our time? And those are, everybody say, everyone say, who? American folk singers, which I want you to put together with kind of a classical idea of folk singers. These are the migrants and immigrants. They're the American folk singers, the ones that are keeping the engine of what is America and American alive. How about them apples? How about them chilaquiles? So I want to give that to you, and you guys think it through, OK? And, and improvise or modify it and, and put your signature on it the way you perceive that. And you may want to listen to some music to get back in the flow, get back into the feeling. Get yourself a harmonica. This is a, it's a different kind of poem. Let me, let me get to this different kind of poem after I do this different kind of poem over here. Let me read you. Uh, this is what happens when you don't have a stapler. Everyone say, everyone say stapler. Everyone say a stapler. See, that's, that's, that's in Spanish. And that's how I learned to spell in elementary school by pronouncing English words in Spanish. Kind of a U-turn. We all function with U-turns to learn. We don't know English, we go, uh, pencil, pencil, P-E-N-C-I-L, pencil. I spelled it. So that's how I used to, that's how I learned how to spell in English, by learning it in Spanish. Business, business, B U. that's a hard one. Maria de la Luz knows how to walk. So th this, this poem, uh, feel free to do this yourselves. I put a number of stories together into one. And I, I didn't talk a lot about how they're related. I just went from one into the other, like swimming in, in, in uh, one wave and then following the next wave without saying this is this and that is that. Maria de la Luz. She ambles toward El Norte. She remembers as she steps, wasps and spiders webbed in between the corn and fowler. Her mama, Concha, Concha's story, the fire she fanned to clear the path through the thick burn-colored stalks. All this she almost touches, the blueberries, and Skagit, Washington, in the line of men wrapped as cocoons and dark as amber flecked honey. At the line, the only store and fireball where you can cash your check, shirts twisted and whispered and upright. Down in Illinois, in Cobden, you go through the back door of Darden's bar and buy drinks for the foreman, El Cuadrado. Maria's coming home after returning to Atizapan de Zaragoza, where she works at La Tortilleria next to La Señora Muñoz. It is an abyss, smoked and metal flat, and deep 
with nixtamal, corn mash. Good pay in South Georgia, she says. I'll work the cucumbers. Feed in water, skin see-through, peels and peels off and off. Then on Saturday, bus to Walmart, bus back to camp. Season after season, the crossing higher, alone, or with groups of three, the coyote says. I'm leaving you here at the bottom of this mountain. You Indians know how to climb. She remembers Guadalupe, Rios, say from the edge of Santa Maria Corte in Nayarit. Nosotros los peyoteros sabemos caminar. We know how to walk in Indian country. Maria de la Luz with an address in her bag. Her son, who was taken many years ago, 1346 D Street, San Diego. Will she recognize Juan? Is the street still there? Who is he now? Who am I now? Who will he remember? You, this ancient trail of grandmothers and deportadas. I know how to walk, Maria de la Luz says, prays. As she ascends the black mountain, as she moves her body, tiny, as she listens to the sudden rush of things fall among thorns and hisses, Maria de la Luz notices a band of light. That's Maria de la Luz. Uh, I named the poem after my mom. Yeah. What's good about writing poetry and about writing is you can put all your whole family in it. OK? So you're writing poetry. One good thing you can do in there is put your family in it. And I, I decided to do that early on. Uh, it wasn't a hard decision. It just came naturally uh, because I wanted to honor my family uh, who never was given acknowledgment. And they didn't want acknowledgment. They didn't believe in acknowledgment. It's the last thing they would ever think of. But since I'm a different kind of person, um, a public person, I wanted them to get acknowledged. So I put them in my stories in my children's books. And so when I go see elementary school children, they go, oh, Juan Felipe, yeah, uh-huh. Your mama is called Maria de la Luz, huh? Yeah, right? Yeah. And your papa is Felipe who played a harmonica, right? Uh-huh, yeah, we know, we know. And, uh, and my mom is called... Uh, my mom's called Griselda Ramos. So that's when things start working out. When you talk about your family, then others talk about their family. Remember, folk singers, share stories, travel, come together, form a village, a community, share stories, share songs, share uh, riddles. Fui al mercado, compre bellas, vine a la casa, lloré con ellas. That's an interesting style. Everyone say, I went to the marketplace. I bought beautifuls. I came home and I cried with them. And the answer to the riddle is? Onions. <laughs> that's super correct. So, so that's what you do when you're a folk singer. Uh, you travel. Uh, you migrate, you form little villages, tents, trailers, you move, you stop, go to a ranch, work there, but you've got your little harmonica. <laughs> Perhaps you have a little guitar, <laughs> or maybe you have an accordion, like in, um, in San Antonio, in uh, that area of southern Texas, uh, where the uh, uh, nor Norteño music was, uh, was born. So you are, uh, that's what we do. That's what you do, that's what we do. Um, we migrate and we're American folk singers. Uh, a question was, um, uh, was made on, a, on uh, so I, I was asked a question and the question was, how, how do we serve and work in our community? Uh, which, were you interested in that question? Are you interested in that question, how to work in our communities? I think you're already doing this, by the way. Everybody say, we're already doing that, Juan. Well, you're a little late on that one. 
<laughs> but I, I thought of another thing. Another thing came to me, and and and, um, and it's it's nothing new, but it came, it came to me. So I have to share it with and give it to you. See, I have to give it to you. That's that's what happens when when you're a folk singer. You have to give it away, and that is uh, that every, everyone wants to be connected. Everywhere I go. South Florida, St. Petersburg, everywhere I go. Uh, Iowa City, I was there recently. Uh, everywhere I go, uh, Wisconsin, there's a whole story there. Uh, in Milwaukee, uh, every, everyone, especially right now, wants to connect, wants to connect with you and, and share stories and listen to you and, and uh, find something that they're looking for, just like those gold miners. They wanna, they wanna find the gold. They want to find the gold, things are happening. So I, this is how I feel things right now. People want to connect. I was trying to boil it down. I go, what is it, what is it? What's in all these audiences? What's in all these audiences? I mean, I'm spinning. I've been to so many places. And so what's at the heart of it all? People feel urgent, yes they do. People feel like they're in an emergency situation, yes they do. Uh, high schoolers are crying. They just are. Yes, they are. Uh, some are telling me things as if they were in a dream. They go, Juan Felipe, I believe in peace. I believe in peace. I want a life of peace. Yes, yes, they're doing that. A young 11-year-old boy asked me in L.A. He said, I want to learn how to write better. I go, well, what are you writing? He says, I'm, I, I want, uh, he says, I'm writing a story. Well, what is it about? He said, it's about children who have been abandoned because their parents have been deported. So all this is in all these audiences. Urgency, uh, strategy questions. Uh, African-American uh, student in uh, New Jersey says, I want to know what strategies you suggest for political resistance. I go, well, I wish I knew that answer. I wish I knew that answer. I said, maybe you can think about Cesar Chavez going door to door, simply introducing himself, simply saying hello, and simply uh, being concerned, and speaking about some of the issues, and listening to the people. That's all I can offer. So that's, I, it came to me the other, uh, maybe last night, I said, people want to be connected. People want to be connected. So then, my suggestion, which you already know, is to create groups. To create groups, small groups, and take it from there. Be folk singers, share stories, sing songs, read poems. And get into things too. Sometimes we just want to get into the story. Well, okay, immigration. Okay, uh, what are the ten things we have to think about uh, regarding immigration? Let's line them up here in blue and blue and blue markers. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. Everybody say that's good. That's good. Everyone say, of course, that's good. Everyone say, excelente. You know, uh, uh, viva Toledo. <laughs> but think about creating small groups. You and your friends, and then add some people. You, you don't want to do it alone. You can, but you and your friends, you and another friend, go at it and bring people together. After school, at the library, at home, at the center, everywhere, at the park. I remember I was in Tillamook County in uh, Portland, uh, by Portland, Oregon. And it was a small group of parents left, around four of them. I had been the invite, invitee, uh, author dude, and for the school, hoorah, yeah. Shh. And then I was going to meet the parents. But I didn't want to just get my, my big, expensive book and read from my big, expensive book. I said, you know what? I don't really have much to say. You're the ones that have a lot to say. You're the ones who have a lot to say. So why don't we just go around and share whatever you want to share, a song, a, a rhyme, a riddle, something you want to talk about. It's open. You decide. You're the, 
You're the ones. I'm going to stay back. And we went one by one. It was great. Then we got to this, uh, this man who you could, you could, he was burnt down from the sun. He was a st stone cold farm worker. And he was there for his child. He had somehow found some time. He said, Oh, I don't have anything to say. Uh, but I have a song. Okay. When he was finished with his song, I'm telling you, tears were running down my face. And the same is true for the rest of the group. Because they felt everything finally pour out. Nobody says, listen to me. Nobody says I'm important. Nobody says I'm having a hard time, right, in our communities. They just work hard. They just rough it. They just crush through it. But you put them in a group. Put us in a group. There's no thems, really. Put us in a group. And just just watch. And just listen. Folk singers are going to come up with the beauty, the beauty and the spirit of the heart that we want to hear. That then we can talk about immigration and migration. But we're going to start right here. So thank you. Thank you, my dear ones, for inviting me to Toledo. Muchas gracias. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. If you have questions, we can do questions. If not, we'll just jitterbug. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, I'm, a, I'm actually an editor of a small literary journal and poetry press. And I was yeah. just wondering if, what advice you have for, uh, for the editing community and what you would hope to see in the future with the publishing world in poetry. For the ed editing community and for what else was you? And, for the future within the poetry community, what oh. you would love to see. Oh, it's a big future. It's a big, juicy future, and especially right now. You know, everybody, uh, all of us, uh, we want to write. We feel a lot of things, right? Feeling a lot of things. So now's the time to express. Remember, we have to express. We have to get out of the background, get into the foreground. So it, it feels odd, it sounds odd. That's, that's all you gotta do, just come up to the foreground, and 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 say what you want to say, and write what you want to write, and sing what you want to sing. Uh, you look at these early folk singers, and they're just yeah. Well, you know, it was a, back in '49, you know, my great grandfather, uh, Joseph Aaron Smith. Well, he used to play, you know, play the harmonica, and uh, he played a good harmonica, and he played the Clementine. So so they were like operatic. They were just themselves, and they're just themselves. So, um, so now is the perfect time for everyone to to write, to get f your feelings out, your your ideas, your insights, uh, words. It can just be a list of words, by the way. Everyone say a list of words. Everyone say guacamole, apple pie, pumpkin pie, lemon meringue, a man of colonies. Here, in Toledo. We got the best bakeries in the world. You see? And that's it. That's, that's a poem right there. You see? You see, you all did it. So, so uh, now's the time to write. Now's the best time to write. It's always the best time to write. And people's, people's talk and people's stories are extremely needed. Back to the folk singing. Extremely needed. We have to uh, present ourselves, uh, present who we are and what we're going through. 
You have to present America as it is right now, for reals, for reals. Who else is going to tell your story? Who else is going to do it? Who else? So that's why editing and publishing and writing and speaking and cre uh, your creative self is extremely important because you are the ones who are America. Am I right, America? Are you listening, America? <laughs> that's you. You are the folk singers of America, storytellers, uh, women's stories, children's stories, family stories, student stories. It can be in any way you want to write it. You want to pick up a, a musical instrument? You want to pick up a, a little mixtape? Feel free. We, we need Amer the American story, because that otherwise it'll be divided. That's why we need all of you to take part in it. So it's a great time for writing, it's a great time for creative expression, it's a great time for music, and it's a great time for publishing. Homestyle, you know, make it on a tortilla, homestyle. You know, homestyle, it could be a blog, it could be uh, uh, just one page, one page. It's not too expensive, one page. And you fold it, you fold it, and you give it away. Or you publish it and make it more, you know, add more to it. But it can be this easy. Everyone say, it can be that easy, Juan? That's right, it can be this easy. Do not wait. Everyone say, we're not going to wait. I'm going to write it, I'm going to publish my poem on my hand. <laughs> Do not wait, okay? Do not wait. Do not wait. If you wait, you make America wait. And if America waits, it continues to be split in little pieces. If you let America wait, it's going to continue to be split in little pieces. And you're the only ones that can put those pieces together. And the only way to do it is by expressing yourself, telling your story, your real story, sharing them in a group. Remember the group idea, connecting? You can't do it by yourself anymore. You see what happened? <laughs> I, don't, I apologize. I don't know what that was. I just dropped a piece of paper. I didn't know it was that heavy. <laughs> must, be, must be the poem. I got, I got to watch out. A any other questions? for sharing the two or uh, the uh, original works that you shared tonight i wonder where can we find in particular the america poem it's, it's not it's not anywhere it's a, it's just a, br a brand new a uh, brand new little pumpkin so we keep watching for it yeah man, please do I, I i'm moving so so fast and so much i don't have time to 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 do anything else all i do is scribble on uh, scribble and uh, uh, on both sides and drop pieces of paper. And uh, I, I use shirt cardboards a lot. <laughs> so well, I, haven't, I, haven't made it. It, I haven't made it to the publishing part of it. But I, I thank you so much, though. I would like to uh, get that poem out to you. Yes, I sure would. Thanks for being part of it. Yeah.